We previously introduced the idea of similar matrices, link in the description. We said that a matrix B is similar to a matrix A if there exists some matrix P so that B is equal to P inverse AP. We then saw how useful this could be if we found similar diagonal matrices because a diagonal matrix is really simple and similarity preserves a lot of properties between matrices. In this video, we'll extend both of those ideas and cover orthogonal similarity and orthogonal diagonalization, as well as proving some relevant theorems. This video has chapters, so you can skip around as you please. Here's our main definition. If A and B are square matrices, then we say B is orthogonally similar to A if there is an orthogonal matrix P so that that B equals P transpose AP. And recall, since P is orthogonal, this is the same as saying B equals P inverse AP. Link in the description to my lesson covering orthogonal matrices, but we say a matrix is orthogonal if its inverse is its transpose. So this is just like normal similarity, except for an orthogonal matrix P, the equation can be written like this, P transpose times A times P. Just as with ordinary similarity, this relationship is symmetric. So if B is orthogonally similar to a matrix A, well, we could multiply on the left by P and on the right by P transpose. Doing that on the right side of the equation would cancel the P transpose and the P out, and so we would have that P B P transpose equals A. Then letting Q equal P transpose, we'd have that Q transpose times B times Q equals A. And if P is orthogonal, then so too is P transpose, which in this case is Q. So this shows that if B is orthogonally similar to A, A is also orthogonally similar to B. Hence, rather than using the word to, which implies a direction of orthogonal similarity, we may simply say that A and B are orthogonally similar. Then you can guess where this is going regarding diagonalization. If A is orthogonally similar to a diagonal matrix D, so that P transpose AP equals D for some orthogonal matrix P, then we say that A is orthogonally diagonalizable, and that orthogonal matrix P is said to orthogonally diagonalize the matrix A. So this is just like previous discussions of diagonalizability, except instead of A just being similar to a diagonal matrix D, for it to be orthogonally diagonalizable, it has to be orthogonally similar to the diagonal matrix. You probably recall that diagonalizing a matrix is a lot of work, and it's no surprise that orthogonally diagonalizing a matrix is even more work. Before we go through the steps of orthogonal diagonalization, we're going to prove two theorems. The first will help us prove the second, and in proving the second, we will see the steps to orthogonally diagonalize a matrix, and we'll see exactly what class of matrices are orthogonally diagonalizable. This first theorem, like I said, will help us prove the second. It says, if A is a symmetric matrix with real entries, then its eigenvectors from distinct eigenspaces are orthogonal. The proof is straightforward. Let's suppose our symmetric matrix A has eigenvectors V1 and V2 corresponding to the distinct eigenvalues lambda1 and lambda2. Hence, v1 and v2 come from distinct eigenspaces. Thus, it's our goal to prove that v1 and v2 are orthogonal. So consider the dot product av1 dot v2. Instead of having a paired with v1, we can bring it in to be paired with v2 if we take its transpose. So this equals v1 dot a transpose V2. But since A is symmetric, taking its transpose doesn't actually change it, so this just equals this without the transpose. Now, on this left side, there's A times V1, and since V1 is an eigenvector of A corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda1, we know that A times V1 is lambda1 times V1. 
Similarly, on the right side, a times v2 is lambda 2 times v2. So this left side is equal to this right side. But then we have lambda 1 times v1 dot v2, and we have lambda 2. We could pull that scalar out if we wanted to. Lambda 2 times v1 dot v2. So we can subtract the right side from both sides of this equation, and together we have lambda 1 minus lambda 2 v1 dot v2. Lambda 1 and lambda 2 are distinct eigenvalues, so this is certainly not equal to 0. So the only way for this equation to be true is that the dot product of v1 and v2 is 0, and hence those vectors from distinct eigenspaces must be orthogonal. That establishes this result, and in tandem with several other things we've proven, we're now prepared to prove the fundamental theorem of symmetric matrices. This says, let A be an n by n matrix with real entries. Then, a is orthogonally diagonalizable and has real eigenvalues if and only if A is symmetric. So which real matrices are orthogonally diagonalizable? Well, it's the symmetric ones. First, we're going to assume that A is orthogonally diagonalizable and we'll prove that it must be symmetric. If A is orthogonally diagonalizable, then by definition, there must exist an orthogonal matrix P and diagonal matrix D so that P transpose AP equals D. Again, that's just by definition. If P transpose AP equals D, then we can multiply on the left by P and on the right by P transpose to get that A equals p times d times p transpose. Again, that's just multiplying on the left by p on both sides and on the right by p transpose on both sides. On the right, we have p d p transpose, and on the left, the transpose and p, those cancel out because p is orthogonal. So a equals this. Now we'll take the transpose of this and show that doesn't change it in order to show that a is symmetric. So a transpose is equal to this transpose, and the transpose of this product is found by reversing the order and taking the transpose of the factors. So p transpose transpose, d transpose, and p transpose. P transpose transpose is just P because two transposes undo each other. D transpose is just D because D is a diagonal matrix. The transpose of a diagonal matrix doesn't change it. And P transpose, of course, is P transpose. So what do we see? Well, this is just A. We took the transpose of A and we got A right back. So A is symmetric. For the next direction of the proof, we'll assume that A is symmetric and prove that it's orthogonally diagonalizable and has real eigenvalues. Note that if we prove that A is orthogonally diagonalizable, then it's similar to a diagonal matrix and the real entries on the diagonal of that diagonal matrix are the eigenvalues of A. So as long as we prove that it's orthogonally diagonalizable, we will also prove that it has real eigenvalues. This direction of the proof will be significantly supported by previously proven statements. There are links in the description, but there's still a good amount of detail to go through. So let A be symmetric. For each eigenvalue lambda of multiplicity k, we know there is a corresponding set of k linearly independent eigenvectors by the real spectral theorem. This guarantees us that an n by n symmetric matrix has n linearly independent eigenvectors total. For each eigenvalue lambda, its geometric and algebraic multiplicities are equal. And this is sufficient to establish that A is diagonalizable. We previously proved when discussing diagonalizable matrices that an n by n matrix is diagonalizable if and only if it has n linearly independent eigenvectors. So we know that A is diagonalizable. It's our goal now to show that it is orthogonally diagonalizable. You may recall that a diagonalizable matrix is diagonalized by the matrix P whose columns are those n linearly independent eigenvectors. So we're going to stick with those eigenvectors and do some work with them. Specifically, we can perform the Gram-Schmidt process. 
by performing the Gram-Schmidt process on the set of eigenvectors for each eigenspace, we obtain an orthonormal basis for each eigenspace. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson introducing the Gram-Schmidt process if you're not sure about that. So we have an orthonormal basis for each eigenspace. Each basis consists entirely of orthogonal vectors with length 1. But also, the basis vectors from different eigenspaces are orthogonal also by our previous theorem. We know that eigenvectors from distinct eigenspaces have to be orthogonal. So the collection of all the basis eigenvectors is an orthonormal set. Again, the Gram-Schmidt process gave us an orthonormal basis for each eigenspace, but then by our previous theorem, we know that all of those basis vectors in total are all orthogonal to each other. And of course, it's an orthonormal set because we already normalized them all during the Gram-Schmidt process. So we can construct the matrix P whose columns aren't just the n linearly independent eigenvectors, but specifically whose columns consist of the n orthonormal eigenvectors that we just constructed. This means that the columns of P are orthonormal, and thus, by previous theorem, link in the description, we know that means P is an orthogonal matrix. We also know, since P's columns are n linearly independent eigenvectors of A, it must diagonalize A. It's an orthogonal matrix that diagonalizes A, so A is orthogonally diagonalizable. And of course, we have that P inverse AP, which is the same as P transpose AP, is a diagonal matrix. That establishes the theorem, and from the second direction of this proof, we see the steps to orthogonally diagonalize an n by n symmetric matrix. First, we must find a basis for each eigenspace of the matrix. Then, we use the Gram-Schmidt process to obtain an orthonormal basis for each eigenspace. Finally, we form the matrix P whose columns are those orthonormal basis vectors from step 2. Then, our matrix P is orthogonal, and the eigenvalues on the diagonal of D equals P transpose AP will appear in the same order as their corresponding eigenvectors in P. So the way that we build P, the order in which we put those eigenvectors, doesn't really matter, but it will change the order in which the eigenvalues appear once we orthogonally diagonalize A with P. So in short, find the eigenvectors, make them orthonormal, and then use them to construct the columns of P. We'll finish, of course, with an example, orthogonally diagonalizing this symmetric matrix. We have to begin with step one, finding a basis for each eigenspace of A. Finding eigenspaces should be familiar to you at this point, so I will not go through the details, but they are here if you would like to look at them. The basis for the eigenspace corresponding to the first eigenvalue value of 0 is this vector here. The basis for the eigenspace corresponding to the second eigenvalue of 5 is this vector here. And for the third eigenvalue of negative 5, the corresponding eigenspace has this vector as the basis. Of course, each eigenspace having only one vector in its basis makes this an easier example to do by hand because the Gram-Schmidt process just requires that we normalize the three vectors. The alternative, which would be a lot more time consuming, for example, is that one of the bases could contain three vectors, and then we really need to spend a lot of time on the Gram-Schmidt process to convert that to an orthonormal set where all the basis vectors are orthogonal to each other and of course have length one. But in this case, our three basis vectors are all from different eigenspaces, so we already know they're orthogonal to each other, and all that's left to do is to normalize them. The norm of the first eigenspace basis vector is 5 thirds. The norm of the second basis vector is 5 over 4 root 2, and the norm of the third basis vector is also 5 over 4 root 2. I didn't bother writing out the details for this one because clearly its norm is the same as the second one. So our orthogonal diagonalizing matrix P isn't going to have these eigenvectors as its columns, it's going to have the normalized form of those eigenvectors as its columns. So this first column of P is this eigenvector, but divided by its norm. Negative 4 thirds divided by 5 thirds is negative 4 fifths. 
1 divided by 5 thirds is 3 over 5, and so on for the other two columns. If you like, we can rationalize the denominators in these other two columns, and finally have this as our matrix P. Again, this column is obtained by taking this eigenvector and dividing it by its norm to normalize it, and this column is obtained by taking this eigenvector and dividing it by its norm to normalize it. Now once we take this matrix P and compute P transpose AP, what matrix should we get? It should be a diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues of A on the diagonal. The eigenvalues will follow the order of the eigenvectors used to construct P. So this first eigenvector corresponded to the eigenvalue of 0, the second corresponded to the eigenvalue 5, and the third corresponded to the eigenvalue negative 5. And so that's the order in which we see the eigenvalues appear once we diagonalize. P transpose AP looks like this. The computation is tedious. I have not written out the details, but you can do it yourself if you're so inclined. We arrive, of course, at this diagonal matrix. So that's an intro to orthogonal diagonalization and how to orthogonally diagonalize a symmetric matrix. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my linear algebra course and linear algebra exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You you can get early and exclusive access to additional videos and extra practice, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in this course. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about.